And good day, everybody. Welcome to Worship This Evening. It is good to have your company. If you're with us for the first time, my name's Pastor Phil Smith, and uh, I'm part of Bell's Faith Community. We are based on the Sunshine Coast in Australia. We're a uniting church community. And wherever you might be, it's good to have you with us this evening. We're just kicking off into a new series tonight, Receive the Holy Spirit. And that's what we'll be talking about over the next few months, that uh, the next few weeks that are ahead. So good to have you with us. Now, a couple of things. Uh, use the comments on the Facebook feed if you would like to uh, bring in uh, any prayer requests you might have for later on in the service, because at the end of the service, wherever you are, we'll ask you to consider those things and pray specifically for other people. Prayers of thanks and gratitude. It is always good for us to bring our thanks and praise to God. And also, if you could just let us know perhaps where you're watching from. So say good day. It's a little bit like passing the peace. If you've been to a traditional church, we come in, we do that. We're not able to do that at the moment, but it's a good opportunity to say good day as much as give one another a blessing. Let me see if there's a couple of things that we need to uh, to know about for this evening. And first of all, um, yeah, bring those things there. Let's have our prayer requests. Also, we've got an activity coming up a little bit later for people who prefer to use their hands. Maybe you think of it as the children's address, but I know how much people love a children's address. You need to have a Lego, some Lego stuff with you for that. And we'd love to see pictures of what you make with your Lego a bit later in the service. So again, post them in as comments there. And just to let you know a couple of things that are coming up in the course of things. So Wednesday evening, 7.30, there's a prayer meeting. We use the Zoom platform for that, and you'll see an invitation will go out. There'll be a link to that uh, on the Facebook page, probably just during the afternoon on Wednesday. Everybody's most welcome to join us for prayer at that time. Uh, we're running a series of uh, devotions again at the moment through the YouVersion Bible app. So have a bit of a look back through the Facebook feed, and you will see where Kate has posted the series on discipleship. You can catch up with them or jump in halfway through. We're in a series of about 10 at the moment as we wind up on what it's been to be disciples of Jesus with head, heart and hands. YouVersion is a great way to be reading your Bible. And we put together just a short series of uh, daily devotions that we do together, even when we're apart. Um, this coming Thursday evening, Thursday evening at 7.30 each week, we do a thing called What's Our Story? Uh, again, here on the Facebook live feed. This week's going to be a little bit different. A couple of uh, quite famous folks talking about discipleship and the work of the Holy Spirit. So again, bringing us through and helping us understand uh, the spaces that we're in at the moment. This evening, our message, uh, Receive the Holy Spirit, comes to us from the 16th chapter of the book of Acts. As those of you who know me know, I love the book of Acts. It's got everything. We've got sailing adventures. We've got a riot. We get to spend a night in jail. There's an earthquake. Yeah, all sorts of good stuff going on. It's a great big story. And Gwen Fisher is going to read that for us. But have your Bibles open if you want to read along with that. And the three th parts of the story, if you like, there's the journey, there's the people that they meet, and then there's this amazing experience in prison. So we're asking some questions around where is the Spirit leading me? Where is the Holy Spirit going to be taking Bell's faith community and wherever you might be next? When prison becomes a place of prayer and worship, where do we feel stuck? And we're going, well, this is, no, 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 no. Everywhere is a, a place of praise and worship. And we're going to see the amazing change that comes. There's the story of the, the warden in the jail who says, this is all too much. And we go from self-harm to salvation. The radical change that the power of the Holy Spirit can bring um, to us. So lots of good things for us this evening. And we will uh, bring those as the evening progresses. But right now, why don't you sing either like you're on your own or like you're in an auditorium with 5,000 others. It's time for us to worship. And I want to thank the Emmanuel Worship Community in Brisbane for allowing us to use their material again tonight. <laughs> brush makes all the beauty that surrounds us you're a great god every seed that his hand 
are a great guy. So we sing, joining with the choir of creation, singing praise with every nation. All the colors that he paints, every stroke that his brush makes, all the beauty that surrounds us. You're a great God. His hand plans, every life that He gives breath. All creation shows Your glory. You're a great God. So we sing, joining with the choir of creation, singing praise with every nation. I love that sort of singing and the chance for us to say, thank you, God, we praise you. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it. And if that doesn't bring us to a time of, of thanksgiving and praise and gratitude, well, it really should. And there have been a few things I've seen coming in on the stream. Uh, great to have folks with us. I see Russell Darling's there, um, John and Gwen uh, with us there, Sandy Colbert at Diamond Heads. Uh, and there was a particular hello this morning from Cambridge, um, Grant and Julie Stockdale, not able to be with us this morning, their time, this evening, our time. Uh, they're at their local congregational church working on the service there. But you remember last week they asked us to pray for a, a little bub, um, only only a few weeks old, who's had to go undergo some enormous surgery. Well, that happened during the week and it was a success and they are hoping that the whole family will be home from Ormond Hospital sometime in the next few days. So we thank God for that. And there are many other things. Bring those to mind now. Let's pray. Lord God, you are good to us. You are faithful to us in so many ways. And we, we just bring our hearts, even sometimes they, we, we don't have words, we want to express our gratitude to you. In particular, we come to you in the hard spaces of our life with our thanks. There are tough things going on for so many of us right around the world. And in those moments when we know your presence, oh, that is good. 
Lord, for those who are supporting others who are in suffering and in pain and in difficult circumstances right now, thank you that your love flows through them. For those of us who have prayed so diligently for particular things that are, are dear to us and near to us and important and, and you have said yes and made things possible, God, we thank you. And Lord, for all the things that the future might bring, whatever they might be in this time of great uncertainty, thank you that you will be with us as you have always been. Above all else, we thank you for the love of Jesus Christ, that in his life, death and resurrection, there is new and everlasting life for each of us and for all of us. And so, Lord, we just bring you our praise. We add it to the praise of the whole earth. The ocean sings your song. The, the, the wildlife sings your praises. The sun comes up each morning and glows with your glory. And we would add our voices to that. God, we praise you. Amen. Now, we are going to uh, head towards probably the last part of our thinking about this being Christians who are known for the way in which we love the Lord Jesus with all our head, heart and hands, as we've said in the last few weeks. What are the ways in which the way we follow Jesus as disciples, as Christ followers, what does that look like for other people? Well, I want to share with you a YouTube clip from uh, a mate. Chris is a, a minister in, I, I'm not even sure where he is. It's either New South Wales, ACT, it's somewhere down that way. And I saw him do this the other day and I just thought, it's brilliant must share it with you. So Chris, if you are with us this evening, thank you very much. After you've watched this, grab your Lego and build your own example of that if you'd like to, and then post the pictures into the comments uh, or onto the post a bit later on, and we can enjoy them during the week. But uh, have a squeeze at this and enjoy. Hmm. Reading the Bible. Mark, Mark 12, hmm, hear O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and you must love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your mind, and with all of your strength, and you must love your neighbour as yourself, love your neighbour as yourself, how can I do that I wonder, I guess there's lots of ways to do that, I mean there must be 10, 15, maybe even 50 ways to love your neighbour. Hang on, that reminds me of an old song. 50 ways to love your neighbour. Hmm. <coughs> the verses were written to be read, it's plain to see. It really is simple if you take it logically. And uh, Jesus will help you as you follow his decree. There must be 50 ways to love your neighbour 50 ways to love your neighbour Make them a meal, Neil Find them a new home, Tone Care for them if they're ill, Bill It's simple, you see Teach them a new game, Wayne <laughs> Look after their pet, vet Invite them along, Ron Maybe do it for free Give them a pat on the back, Jack Write a letter to Grandstand Share your favourite toy, Roy It's simple, you see You could mentor a kid, Sid You'll be glad you did Offer a hug, Doug You'll set yourself free Hmm Share your life and you certainly will find By your care and cheer your life will be defined so it might be good if we were simply to remind ourselves of 50 ways to love your neighbour 50 ways to love your neighbour Be nice to your boss, Ross Open your home, Joan You can teach a new skill, Jill It's simple, you see Perhaps mow their lawn, Dawn Or have a good chat back Laugh at their jokes, blokes and that includes me. Smile and wave a hello, flow. Help when they need a hand, Dan. Pray a blessing on them, Jim. And a good friend you'll be. 
give them a ride, Clyde. You'll feel good inside. Learn to forgive, Liz. You'll set yourself free. Yep. 50 ways. 50 ways to love your neighbour. Better go and do some. I love that stuff. And I, I'm not sure if our, our live comments uh, are able to take photos at the moment, but certainly when there's a post up later, you can put comments, uh, photographs into comments. Mine has a couple of people surfing, um, and that is, um, you can always share the wave, Dave, when you teach Murph how to surf. It'll be sweet, Pete, just listen to me. Uh, I know Clara sent in one from Golden Beach um, from Glenda Wiltshire's, and I think it was, you could share your, Fred, share your shared, Fred. There's any number of possibilities. Look forward to seeing those. So go to town. If you've got your Lego with you, uh, what might be your addition to uh, Chris's 50 ways? Next thing is to head for our scriptures. And I want to thank Gwen Fisher for uh, reading it to us this evening. If you'd like to follow along, it's from Acts chapter 16. And we pick up as Paul and Silas and Luke and whoever else is in the team head off on their very first missionary uh trip into what becomes Europe. It is the start of the whole, the change of the whole world. It's a really exciting passage. I love it a lot. And the beauty of having Gwen read it for us is she knows how to pronounce all these places. So here we go. Let's uh, let's listen up. And by the, the other thing is, if anybody out there can help me in terms of preparing graphics and so on, that would be really appreciated. I don't think the graphics I've prepared with the um, the words on the screen fit quite properly, but I can't seem to solve that in iMovie. So if you're somebody who knows about that, get in touch, drop me a line, and we can sort that as well. Acts 16, reading from verses 11 to 34. We set sail from Troas and took a straight course to Samothrace, the following day to Neapolis, and from there to Philippi, which is a leading city of the district of Macedonia and a Roman colony. We remained in this city for some days. On the Sabbath day, we went outside the gate by the river, where we supposed there was a place of prayer, and we sat down and spoke to the women who'd gathered there. A certain woman, named Lydia, a worshipper of God, was listening to us. She was from the city of Thyatira, and a dealer in purple cloth. The Lord opened her heart to listen eagerly to what was said by Paul. When she and her household were baptized, she urged us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come and stay at my home. And she prevailed upon us. One day, as we were going to the place of prayer, we met a slave girl, who had a spirit of divination and brought her owners a great deal of money by fortune-telling. While she followed Paul and us, she would cry out, These men are slaves of the Most High God who proclaim to you a way of salvation. She kept doing this for many days, but Paul, very much annoyed, turned and said to the Spirit, I order you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And it came out that very hour. But when her owners saw that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace before the authorities. When they had brought them before the magistrates, they said, These men are disturbing our city. They are Jews and are advocating customs that are not lawful for us as Romans to adopt or observe. The crowd joined in in attacking them and the magistrates had them stripped of their clothing and ordered them to be beaten with rods. After they'd given them a severe flogging, they threw them into prison and ordered the jailer to keep them securely. Following these instructions, he put them in the innermost cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was an earthquake so violent that the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's chains were unfastened. 
When the jailer woke up and saw the prison doors wide open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself since he supposed that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted in a loud voice, Do not harm yourself, for we are all here. The jailer called for lights, and rushing in, he fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them outside and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They answered, Believe on the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. They spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. At the same hour of the night, he took them and washed their wounds. Then he and his entire family were baptized without delay. He brought them up into the house and set food before them. And he and his entire household rejoiced that he had become a believer in God. Thanks again. It is uh, so good to hear the word of God. Let's pray together and ask the Father that you would introduce us to the living word of God, Jesus, as we, we come to encounter what you have to say for us in the written word. We thank you that we have the scriptures. We thank you that we have easy availability to this. And we thank you that we are still in communion, that no matter where we might be, we are still your people together the body of Christ. So speak to us each and all and inspire us to live more fully, to be led by the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. It's a great story, as I say, and as you know, I do love the book of Acts. It is just one of my favourite things. And as we start to consider life in the power of the Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Holy Spirit poured out upon us, I want you to think about these three couple of things. And, and there's a, a theme that sort of runs through this whole passage that only occurred to me as I was rereading the message a half an hour ago. Our worship and witness are not two separate things. A life of witness and worship looks like that. Witness and worship sit together. The Holy Spirit brings us to worship and that's a witness in itself. And the places where we witness are in fact places of worship and an act that glorifies God. But let's begin. Following the Holy Spirit, well, what's it like? Where's it gonna take you? Here's the thing. The story begins with setting a straight course. I love that. They set sail on a straight course. There we go, no problem. But where do they end up? Meandering outside the city beside a river, eh, finding some people in the shade of a tree. Being led by the Spirit can seem like full steam ahead, straight and obvious. But being led by the Holy Spirit should also take you outside the walls, well outside the four walls, to where you will encounter people and choices that need to be made. We know what we are supposed to be doing. We know Jesus has said, go out into the world and as you go, make disciples. Only last week when we were together in the packing shed at Hoyles, we, we were in John chapter 20 and we heard Jesus say, receive the Holy Spirit and now I send you. Paul and his missional team were not sitting waiting for the world to come to know Jesus. They set sail to take the good news of life in the risen Lord Jesus Christ wherever the Holy Spirit led them and to whomever the Spirit introduced them. Are we still sitting waiting for the world to come to us? Hard question, big question, important. The foreseeable and achievable goal of this little church, Bell's Faith Community, is to connect 200 people each week with God's good news in Jesus Christ, in whatever way that might be. And in light of that, our first lesson from this scripture is from Luke's opening. We set sail from Troas and took a straight course to Samothrace and following the next day to Neapolis and from there to Philippi, which is a leading city of the district of Macedonia and it's a Roman colony. Here is relentless determination, people. They are going to reach their goal. These aren't tourists 
on a, a cruise. No, no, no. Philippi is the perfect place for their mission. God has brought us to our place of mission. Don't keep looking over the horizon. It is time for us to drop anchor and get to work in our Philippi. The center of Macedonia is where you live. A colony as it is of the culture that surrounds us as that was in the Roman world. So how will you get to work? How will you share the good news of salvation and the new life that is now and forever in your Philippi? Well, the great thing and for those of you who, who don't know us, we've never had a building of our own. So this experience in the COVID thing is in a sense, we're a little bit ahead of the game. But the thing about being a church that's never had a building is that we can skip ahead and we can follow Paul and Luke's and Silas's example. He doesn't find a synagogue. He doesn't go looking for, a, you know, a nice shaped building where people get together regularly in town. He doesn't stay inside the walls. Outside the gate by the river, outside the gate, where we suppose there was a place of prayer. Of course there is. We sat down ah, and spoke to the women who had gathered there. In that little sentence is powerful understanding of mission. If we're listening to the Holy Spirit, instead of only our habits, our routines, our traditions, our worship will become integrated with our witness. They go outside to find a place of prayer. They're looking to worship and they sit down amongst others and that's where it all comes together. These missionaries, our example, go outside into a place where people work and gather. They sit down there amongst them to pray. And what do they find? <laughs> Of course, what they find is what we find when we open our eyes, that the Holy Spirit has already gone ahead of them at work, preparing lives. Hearts were open to listen eagerly to what was said by Paul. And when Lydia and her household were baptized, she urged us saying, if you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come and stay at my home. And she prevailed upon us. See, you won't meet Lydia inside a Sunday worship service, inside four walls. We are sent out. We are sent out people. And there are people out there who are waiting, just craving to hear the good news that we have. And the impact when we live public lives of witness and worship is there to see. She and her whole household were baptised. Here's another hard question for us. Why aren't we seeing more people baptized in the life of Bell's Faith community? Lydia says, come, use my house. Do we see that kind of all-in enthusiasm? That's what we're looking for. Paul and his crew recognized the leading of the Holy Spirit to go where they were told, speak up because they know people are ready to listen and the whole world changes. Lydia, an outsider, a woman, a successful business operator and not a trained minister, hosted the first church, the first European Christian church. Yeah. Christianity flooded throughout Europe from her lounge room. I kid you not. That's where it began. Can we see ourselves in her story? Can you see yourself in her story? Listen when the spirit says go. The straight line might turn into meandering by the river. That's okay. But speak when the spirit says speak up because people are ready. And now is the time. And wherever you are, wherever you are watching this is the place. Whatever the place, because even a prison becomes a place of prayer and praise. Coming to that next part of the story, if you have it open with you there, here's what happens next. Being led by the Holy Spirit takes us into spiritual realms. Being led by the Holy Spirit also takes us into politics, money and religion. And ask yourself, do you really want to go there? 
Paul, Luke, the rest of the team are focused on establishing and being the church in that city of Philippi. They're telling people about Jesus, meeting people's needs, worshipping together. Sounds a lot like Bell's or I'm sure the faith communities in which you belong as we seek to live our life of mission today. And then we met a slave girl who had a spirit of divination and brought her owners a great deal of money by fortune telling. If we are serious about offering those around us salvation through Jesus Christ, first and foremost, if that's our top shelf, if that is the best that we have to bring, then we will never be just another casserole bank or a church that meets on Sundays. And we will find ourselves in the spiritual battle that is going on in this world. In the weeks ahead, we're going to be talking about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And here we see why we need the gifts of spiritual discernment and prophecy. This annoying girl following them around is not some simple nuisance to be shrugged off. Oh, she's just pretending to, to tell the future. Oh, no. She is enslaved, owned by powers of darkness. A spirit of divination that Paul recognises and will not tolerate nor turn a blind eye to. She is owned by powers of darkness that include corrupt owners abusing her for their own gain. And when Christians challenge these things, you can expect many in the community to take sides and it will get ugly because the powers of darkness, pretty well connected with the politics of power, and always cosy with money and a religion that doesn't rock the boat. You push back, you'll find out. When her owners saw that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and they dragged them into the marketplace before the authorities. They've set this girl free. But when they brought them before the magistrates, they said, these men are disturbing our city. We don't like our lives to be disturbed. And they are Jews. Ah, they play the religious card. And they are advocating customs that are not lawful for us as Romans. See, when it suits us, we'll, we'll just be good citizens. And the crowd joined in, attacking them. And the magistrates had them stripped of their clothing and ordered them to be beaten with rods. And after they'd given them a solid flogging, had them thrown in jail. Why don't we read? But the Holy Spirit told Paul just to ignore her and let it slide because setting up the church and organising the leadership committee structure was the most important thing. The slave girl answers that question for us. The slave girl. Please notice the language that Luke uses. The slave girl would cry out, these men are slaves of the most high God who proclaim to you a way of salvation. She's identified who we are and what we do. Worship and witness, they're linked together in that. Paul and Silas and the others are slaves too. Who owns me? Am I a slave of Christ? No longer my own person concerned with my rights, my privilege, my comfort. Am I serving my mortgage? my political party, my ambition, my whatever idols, or am I a slave to the most high God? God who is over all those things and who I think lately is over all those things. My one life purpose, is it to proclaim to others the way of salvation found only in Jesus Christ? And I'll cop the flogging if needs be. Because the Holy Spirit, the very power that raised Jesus from death to new life, empowers my life. That spirit dwells in you and me, no matter where we go and no matter what happens next. And we don't know what happens next, do we, in these uncertain times? May I digress for a moment and leave you with a question for which I have no answer, but I think we do need to wrestle with. Again this week, there's been much heated debate about whether to obey the laws of the land and government authority or to defy them. And we've seen this in many different things. 
And Christians have very different answers on each different issue, don't they? Sometimes to me, it seems that what it comes down to is what's the lowest level of risk? <laughs> uh, what, what suits me? That might be how I answer this question. And it's about everything from wearing masks to attending protest rallies to whether we should gather for worship or isolate in our homes, etc. In this fascinating story, it's worth noting, the same bloke who wrote in a letter to the Roman Christians right at the centre of the empire, obey the government for God is the one who has put it there. So those who refuse to obey the law of the land are refusing to obey God and punishment will follow. Paul wrote that. But here in this story, it's that same fellow Paul who makes no apology for defying the law courts, rejecting what the magistrates have to say and taking the punishment. And so we find ourselves in this story now in prison with Paul and Silas and Luke and whoever else actually got arrested that night. In a place of terrible uncertainty, in a time of terrible uncertainty, as we find ourselves in, what do they do? <laughs> they sing and worship. They praise God. When it seems as if there'll be a suicide, the warden's going to fall on his sword, salvation comes. The Holy Spirit given to us by Jesus, who sends us out as his servants to announce his good news, never leaves us hanging. No matter where we find ourselves or how uncertain the circumstance might be, the Holy Spirit will always lead us to worship, drawing us into the very presence of God. If you're struggling with online services, and I know many of us are, not knowing that, that precious sense of uplifting that we've come to know for centuries, haven't we? We have loved being together on Sundays. Ask the Holy Spirit to flood you now. You're not in a prison cell. You're in your lounge room and I'm in the front study. Let, let's, let's do that now. Lord God, uplift our hearts, refresh our spirits. Sometimes we do struggle with being alone. With, with Is this really church? Somehow work beyond what we can see and touch and feel, Lord. Unite us in communion with you. Come into our hearts now, Lord God. Lift us up and 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 refresh us that we might worship you in spirit and in truth and not only now in this moment but in all the days of our lives and wherever we might be together that we might not feel alone but know that we are the body of Christ glorifying our Lord and Saviour Jesus. About midnight Paul and Silas were praying and they were singing hymns to God and the prisoners were listening to them. There it is again, worship and witness like that. And then suddenly there was an earthquake so violent that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were open and everyone's chains were unfastened. Oh God, that in our darkness, even in the midnight of our lives, inspire us to sing and praise. Worship that is truly a witness so that others listen in wonder. God, that you would shake our own prison cells, some of which we've made for ourselves. We've locked ourselves in and shake it with an earthquake that is so violent that all our false foundations are ruined. And then everyone's chains might be unfastened. See, the Holy Spirit opens the doors for everyone. I couldn't resist another pun. That's the key. That's the key to this. When, not if, because we are praying for God to move in power amongst this church. When the Holy Spirit shakes everything, please don't freak out. This will be our loving God at work, our Father and Creator's Spirit recreating and caring for us in amazing ways. Old mate, the warden, he loses it and he wants to end it all. And the Christians are, I'll bet, here's the chance, let's make a runner, the doors are open, they're tempted to bolt as well. But when the Holy Spirit moves amongst us in power, soon, don't run away. We are still here, says Paul. Sirs, what must I do to be saved? The warden asks and they answer, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. You and your household. See, if we run when the powerful moments for faith sharing come our way, 
Who will answer our friend's questions? If we dodge the issue, if we bolt, when they are amazed, stunned, uncertain of something going on in their lives, we are Johnny on the spot. It's our job. They spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. At the same hour of the night, he took them and washed their wounds. Oh, there's ministry going two ways here. And then he and his entire family were baptized without delay. He brought them up to the house. He set food before them. And he and his entire household rejoiced that they had become believers in God. Do you see? Belonging, eating, listening, learning, serving, bells. All the best that we have as a church only, only comes to fullness in salvation offered and received in the power of the Holy Spirit. To Lydia, to the warden, to their household, to their city and to us, 2,000 years later, salvation comes. Amen. Amen. Let me just uh, take you back then and just refresh those those couple of, uh, of aspects of it. So when we follow the Holy Spirit, it may be a straight line and it may take us other places. It will take us to meet people and make choices and we might find ourselves meandering along into all sorts of circumstances. But the Holy Spirit will be with us as worship and witness connect. God will move in power. We're going to come to a time of um, prayers for others. And so I have asked a, a newfound friend of mine. We've only sort of connected in the last couple of months over various things. And Pastor Belinda Clear is at Southport Church. Now, that's not Southport on the Gold Coast. That's Southport in Melbourne. In fact, South Melbourne and the Port of Melbourne. Uh, and so an opportunity for somebody who is there in the centre of that to pray with us and to help us understand something of the circumstances there. Belinda, welcome to Bells and to worship this evening. Thanks, Phil. It's nice to be here. Now, as the state that, uh, that now is the capital of the AFL, we host all your teams. Who do you barrack for being in that parish? Oh, I don't know if I should admit to this, but I'm a born and bred Collingwood supporter. Look, yeah. your secret is safe with us. That's okay. Thanks, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, please tell us um, what, what is the, the sense, not only within your church, yep. but also in the community in which your church lives. How are you feeling at the moment? It's pretty, it's pretty scary and it's pretty, um, yeah, it it's, all feels a bit surreal, but we are super lucky as well that we're not seeing the numbers that we're seeing overseas. But I think um, the death toll, like the, the rising numbers of deaths and the rising number of people critically ill is, um, yeah, it's, it's tough. There's definitely a feeling of heaviness in the community down here at the moment. How are you also coping with something I sense here in our mm. self-righteousness or stupidity? I'm not sure what it is, but there are those of us who, who have a kind of a, well, it's somebody else's fault and who can I be angry at and, and who can I blame? How, how as Jesus people are you trying to live in that space and say, well, hang on. We're trying to be really conscious and I, I as a leader am trying to be really conscious in the language that I use and talking about um, our corporate responsibility for this, that actually no one person or no one group of people can be to blame for this. It's something that we all have agency in and um, we're, we're all responsible for making a difference in this. And so trying to use that real corporate language, but also that real corporate language of hope that actually we can all be the hope. We can all be Jesus hands and feet in this. And actually um, we're particularly moved by uh, um, an article, an interview that we were reading with Bishop Michael Curry from America. And he was talking about how um, at the moment to be the hands and feet of Jesus in the world normally is going and serving the poor or, you know, going and doing things, but actually at the moment being the kingdom of God in the world is actually staying at home is keeping our distance is wearing your face mask, um, those sorts of things. And, and so I think trying to remember that actually as the people of God, this, at this present moment in time, this is our responsibility. 
So those ways in which we show our love to others mm. is the motive. You know, why do I do this? Because maybe it's good for someone else. Yeah. Lead us in prayer this evening in our prayers for others and for God's will. Absolutely. Yeah, I'd be, I'd be, I'd, I would love to. Thanks, Belinda. Let's pray. Loving God, we thank you that we can come from all, je- all corners of your world and we can worship you this day and in our lives. We particularly pray at this time for our leaders, for our state leaders, for our nation's leaders, for the leaders of our world and various different countries around our world as they grapple with this crisis and the challenges that that presents. We pray for families who during this time have lost loved ones and are grieving and mourning and not being able to commemorate those deaths in the way that they would like to. We pray for those people who sadly have had to die without their loved ones around them because they have had this virus. And we pray for them who in what is a difficult time is made even more difficult by the current circumstances. We pray for those who are in states who are not as ravaged by the virus as others. And we pray that they may be able to extend empathy and care and recognise their privilege in that. We pray for those areas who are affected, that they can have love and care for each other and sit within the, the midst of the liminal space that this is. We pray as God's people, we're thankful that you walk with us that you have walked through situations like this with generations before us. And while it all seems unfamiliar and scary to us, it's something that you've walked before. Continue to walk with us and continue for us to be aware of your presence amongst us. We ask all of this in your name. Amen. Belinda, thank you and every blessing to you in the week thank that you have. Please give Bell's love to uh, the folks of Southport Church. Certainly will, yeah, definitely. Well, maybe there's one of these, we do a thing on Thursday evening where what's your story? And it's just a half hour live chat. Okay. And you might find yourself on, on the webcast one Thursday evening, if that's cool. Oh, I would be, I would be welcome. I would be willing to do that. All right. Every blessing and we'll see you sometime. Thank you so much. Take care, guys. God above the broken, God above the poor, God above the lost and lonely children of the world, God above the homeless, God above the sick, God above addiction and the wickedness of man, God above the hungry, Above all poverty God above the war and all the suffering we see God who reigns forgiveness God who gives His love God who gave us Jesus so that we might know His heart You are the Lord
God above the hungry, above all poverty. God above the war and all the suffering we see. God who reigns forgiveness. God who gives His love. God who gave His Jesus so that we might know His heart. Thanks again to Emmanuel uh, Worship, Emmanuel Worship and their community in Brisbane. Isn't it great to see a video clip with um, scenes from cities that we actually know, or some of us, many of us would know. And they have a, a Facebook live stream. If you look for Emmanuel Worship or Emmanuel Community, Wednesday evenings at 8.30 with their musicians in the backyard. And it's, it's, it's a joy. It's a half hour or so of great praise and worship. So thanks again, Pat Keaty and uh, the rest of the crew there. A couple of things that um, I, I wanted to bring to mind. As we pray for others, I would encourage wherever you are this evening when the online part of the service comes to an end, pray for one another's personal needs together there where you are. There is power in that. Uh, a couple of things, let me uh, just bring to mind the opportunity for us to give once again. And coming up uh, in the next little while. The, um, I'm going to send out a, a bit of a, a feedback survey. It would be good to know what we're doing well and, and what could change because we really... Okay. Um, hopefully we're, we're back in terms of audio now. So we don't know what the future looks like for us, do we? The possibilities for Queensland are what they are for New South Wales or Victoria or anyone else. So if we do end up back in a circumstance of worshipping only online and not able to gather, we need to know how we're doing with that. So we'd love your feedback and your involvement in that. It takes a lot of people or it takes a lot of hours or both to put the service together each week. We are looking for a monthly location, still continuing in the hope that circumstances continue here in Queensland that we will be able to gather for Holy Communion and spend at least once a month together, please be at prayer as we try to find a place that, that serves our purpose and that is available to us. Next Sunday, um, there's a few people going to have a picnic. 
So the Canavan Gracie Park, which is in the middle of Belle Vista, right by the lake, there's a barbecue, there's plenty of room there, plenty of room for social distancing and, do, distancing and doing all that properly. I know there are a few people having a barbecue, having some lunch from 12.30 till about three. Fill your boots, find yourselves there. And as you continue to pray and be sent, Jesus says, and so I send you. What better could the community around you say than those Christians? They're goers, no question about it. So Lord God, we ask for your blessing on the week that is ahead, on all our days, and into forever, into eternity with you. We ask that we might go in peace to love and serve you in all we do, that our worship and witness would be one, the totality of our lives, that you would be glorified and many people would come to know salvation. Amen. Every blessing to you, folks.